All right, guys. It is a cloudy, gloomy, rainy, bomb cyclone kind of day here in the Point Lonesome Swamp here in the Sunshine State. You must need to stay in your little, on your little tuffet, Miss Muffet. And uh, good Lord, it is right now. It is 68 degrees. It will be 29 degrees tonight here as the bomb cyclone rips through. Uh, but it is Saturday. I believe that's somewhere like March 12th, 2022. I have no idea if I'm in the frame of this camera or not. I think that I am, uh, since I don't have eyes in the back of my head. But it being Saturday, one of my favorite days here is when I bring you my weekly Apocaloptimism Hopium Roundup rant where I just go on the pages of the mainstream media and check stories you guys have sent me and whatnot to find out what all of the various dreamers and uh, deniers and techno-utopians and corporate greenwashers and the usual list of suspects are telling us how we're going to turn this planet around can't see this camera at all in the dark here. I'm out in my in my trailer since my bedroom kitchen has been flooded out. But I want to get to the main one today, one of the most despicable stories I might have ever read on Collapse Chronicles, uh, which we're going to end up with. Climate change is scary but don't let it put you off of having children but uh, uh we're just gonna have to build up i just want to briefly stop at four more stories and then we're going to uh, get to the single most outrageous story i might have read this year but we're going to start right here several versions of this this one from ap <clears throat> u.s officials reverse course on pesticides harm to wildlife. Yes, U.S. wildlife officials reversed their previous finding that a widely used and highly toxic pesticide could jeopardize dozens of plants and animals with extinction after receiving pledges from chemical manufacturers that they will change their product labels for malathion so that it is used more carefully by gardeners, farmers, and other consumers. Yes. Uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service has said malathion could threaten 78 imperial species, imperiled species with extinction and cause harm to many more. Yes, but the wildlife officials reversed their position on the 78 species. Yes, in a opinion, following talks among malathion manufacturers. Yes, uh... Let's uh, see, the, the manufacturers have agreed to use new labels that provide extensive guidelines on when and where malathion should be used to avoid killing wildlife. Yes, uh, there you go. So those 78 endangered species can go back to drinking malathion many versions of this story which Manga Bay has been reporting on for the past three years. Amazon rainforest is reaching a climate change tipping point. The Amazon rainforest is reaching a critical tipping point according to researchers beyond which it may no longer be able to recover from events such as droughts and wildfires. Yes, the result would be permanent loss of much of the world's largest rainforest, 
with devastating consequences for climate change and biodiversity. Uh, <clears throat> the rainforest might stop growing back as rainforests altogether, a phenomenon known as dieback. This could have dramatic worldwide consequences. Um, yes, this goes, so this goes on and on and on. Of course, they bring in Bozo Nero, but don't worry. <clears throat> well, the researchers cautioned that the many different factors involved in causing an Amazon rainforest dieback makes the scenario impossible to predict with certainty. Quote, the Amazon is definitely one of the fastest of these tipping elements in the climate system. Close quote. But the threshold has not been crossed yet. However, meaning, meaning that if governments take swift action to reduce emissions, it could still be avoided. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, was it last week or two weeks ago talking about uh, this new hydrogen powered dump truck? Uh, this sustainable clean green energy dump truck which of course is being used in a giant mine well this year th this week we're going from dump trucks to the 34,000 ton infinity train will recharge itself with gravity all right an Australian British partnership will build a new renewable energy mine train. Yes, an Australian mining company says it is building a huge infinity train that will charge itself by moving downhill. It will carry heavy iron ore in one direction and use that weight and movement to charge the train for its return trip back to the mine for more iron. Quoting uh, the uh, CEO Elizabeth Gaines, quote, the infinity train has the capacity to be the world's most efficient battery electric locomotive. Yes. Uh, making it a capital efficient solution for eliminating diesel and emissions from our rail operations. Yes. Uh, Fortescue Metals Group is one of the largest producers of iron ore in the world. Yes. They're in partnership with the folks behind the Formula One racing company. There you go. But uh, we don't talk about much about geothermal energy here. But uh, we have geothermal energy. You can forget all the rest as Quay's energy is set to uh, unlock terawatt scale geothermal engineering. Geothermal energy is the only renewable clean source of energy capable of providing baseload power at the scale of the energy transition. Yes, and quasi energy Quasi Energy, there you go, plans to harness deep geothermal by 
introducing this new drilling system capable of reaching depths between 10 and 20 kilometers, roughly 6 to 12 miles down uh, in the ground. At these depths, geothermal energy is power dense and virtually unlimited and available everywhere on the planet, said uh, this planet eater Arunas Chesmus, quote, a rapid transition to clean energy is one of the biggest challenges faced by humanity. Geothermal energy can provide a lot more power using fewer resources. We have to approach the clean energy transfer transition from both those angles. Quasi's solution seeks an op see makes it optimistic for a future where clean renewable energy will secure the future of our planet. Close quote. All right, so we have uh, 12 mile deep holes in the ground saving the planet. But anyway, guys, this I've just been trying to procrastinate. I'm not sure where this story, just whatever news.co UK and I'm sorry, I cannot remember the alert leader, the alert leader, the alert listener who uh, sent me one of the most despicable, uh, apocalyptic, uh, overpopulation denying, uh, pro natalist stories I might have ever read. And I challenge you, I challenge you to uh, make it to the end of this article. Hopefully my battery will shut down before I projectile vomit my cup of coffee all over this computer. This bit of uh, apocalyptic horse shit is written by this clueless moron by the name of Tom Chivers. Take it away, Tom Chivers and bray your ignorance all over Collapse Chronicles. <clears throat> this is an environmental analysis by Tom Chivers in the mainstream media. <clears throat> Climate change is scary, but don't let it put you off having children. A growing number of people say they are staying childless to save the planet, but there's not much reason to think that will help. And I do agree with Tom at this point, there's not much reason to think that, st that, that staying childless is going to help save the planet, but it might help save your, your unborn children from, from a life of hell. And bringing new lives into the world gives us a reason to improve things. Okay. Tell us all about it, Tom. Climate change is scary. The latest report from the IPCC stressed just last week just how frightening it is. Warning of the warning of the risk that many species around the world, you know, maybe including humans, will become extinct by 2100. It also urged us to prepare for the increased risks of floods, malnutrition, and food insecurity, waterborne diseases, and a whole lot of things, including, quote, irreversible and severe losses of ecosystem services and biodiversity in the Amazon basin, for instance. And that's just given two degrees C of warming. We have already 
experienced about 1.1C and more warming is baked in. It is understandable that people are worried, so much so that climate change might be why some people are avoiding having children. It's not the only reason why birth rates are down, of course. There are many. In Britain, for example, there are unaffordable housing prices, the huge cost of childcare, and a lack of support for working parents. But there have been plenty of stories lately indicating a trend for people to decide against becoming parents because of the world they, meaning their children, will have to grow up in. Financial analyst Morgan Stanley warned investors last summer that the, quote, movement to not have children owing to fears over climate change is growing and impacting fertility rates quicker than any preceding trend in the field of fertility decline. So, so far, uh, so good on the hopium. I am cheering on the hopium. Uh, meanwhile, Dr. Britt Ray, a human and planetary health fellow at Stanford University in the U.S., said last year that, quote, fear of a degraded future due to climate change is driving the fall in birth rates in the West. And people are concerned about more than just their own children suffering in a harsher and more dangerous environment. They also fret about the impact that having children will have on the climate. 60% of young Americans surveyed said they were worried about the carbon footprint of procreation as well as about the well-being of any current or future children. So, so far, uh, everything the band has said is, is completely true and uh, we do have some true hopium uh, <clears throat> that people are pulling their heads out of their asses and realizing that a human being who is never born, you could, you could, you could make two statements with no debate. A human being who is never born will never suffer, and a human being who is never born has a carbon ecological footprint of exactly 0, 0.00. There is no way anybody can debate that double statement about humans never being born. All right, back to this uh, idiot. This is understandable, but that does not mean it is right. He spends half the article talking about all the reasons it is exactly right, it is spot on, and it is the only possible thing you can do at this point to have any effect on anything. It is the only uh, lifestyle choice you can make is to not breed, preferably sterilize yourself before you ever have a kid like I did when I was 22 years old. <clears throat> this is understandable, but that does not mean it's right. If you don't want to have children, then that's fine. Thank you, Tom, for your permission not to have children. On the other hand, if you do want to have children, but are denying yourself because of the fear of climate change or the fear of making it worse, then many experts will reassure you that this would be a mistake. It's okay to have kids. Mm, this is Dr. Hannah Ritchie, 
an environmental scientist, blah, blah, blah. Okay. <clears throat> Quote, there are two dimensions to this. One is that you should not have children because their future will be so bad that it is not ethical to bring them into the world. Well, certainly, I agree with that statement. The other is you should not have children because they will have an impact on the climate and the rest of the planet and every earthling we share the planet with. Apparently this clueless woman, uh, like so many others, forgets the other eight planetary boundaries <clears throat> that overpopulation is the number one cause of. That, that, that like climate change it, it is the only planetary boundary totally ignoring the other eight planetary boundaries. This is this environmental scientist completely unaware that if climate change were not a planetary boundary, the other eight would destroy the planet. And I don't like either. This woman does not like either. Okay, now we have the subheading the future is not all bad. There you go. Richie points out that most of the climate scientists she knows have young children. Well, this is a, we have been remarking on this for years, any climate scientist having a child right now gets the award of being the single most clueless moron on the planet, bar none. A climate scientist having kids, and, and, and it's unbelievable how many numbers of climate scientists are, are, are still having these little blankety blanks. She says, quote, there is a disconnect between the general public who have this worry and the climate scientist who are more aware than anyone of the risks. If the people who study this every day are still having kids, that should be a signal that the risk to children is not that high. Yes, it should be a signal that W-A-S-F. It is the single biggest, well, one of the many single biggest signals. To be clear, to be clear, it is true that climate change will probably make life worse than it otherwise would have been. In a world with no climate change, there would be less risk of floods, of various diseases, of droughts and wildfires, of famines. And of course, in a world without climate change, there would still be eight other planetary boundaries, which of course will never be mentioned in this story or 99% of other stories. All right, but, but the question is not, will the world be worse, but will the world be so bad that you would rather not be born into it. And that seems very unlikely. Even the IPCC's more severe projections with temperatures rising above four degrees C talk about more severe floods and droughts, heat waves and so on. Those are bad things, but they don't talk about the collapse of civilization or the extinction of humanity. And I beg to differ. I think there are plenty of people. I have, I have interviewed myself how many 
uh, people saying a four degree rise, you better believe, will be the collapse of global industrial civilization at least, and and, uh, and very well uh, can end up in the extinction of the human race and certainly the extinction of millions uh, of our fellow earthlings. So right there, uh, you, you could uh, go off on, on that, that the IPCC uh, claiming that a four degree sea rise uh, would not result in the collapse of civilization or the extinction of humanity. The unfair thing about climate change is that it is likely to affect the poorest nations worst. You know, those little brown and black people that, that we honkies up here don't need to worry about. But most of the people worrying about having kids appear to be in the rich west which will be less affected. It is very unlikely that climate change will mean that children in the UK will have worse lives than, say, their grandparents did. And no one thinks that the baby boomer generation would rather not have been born. Well, take it from this boomer, I wish to hell I had never been born. And there is a countervailing force. Here, here we go. This, this is where we, we blast into the stratosphere. And then there is a countervailing force. The world is getting richer, says the appropriately named Richie. Quote, for the poorest countries, being richer and more resilient is key. To take an extreme example, we worry about Bangladesh being swamped by sea level rise as the climate gets warmer, but about a third of the land area of the Netherlands is underwater. And because it is a rich nation, it can deal with that by using dikes and pumps. Bangladesh is trying to, but because it is much poorer, that's more difficult. It is, however, becoming richer fast because of global trade and improving technology. And as the seas rise, Bangladesh will be better able to deal with it, as will the rest of the world. All of the IPCC's scenarios, even the most severe, assume that economies will continue to grow, although growth is much slower in worst cases. So here you have the mainstream media talking about infinite growth on a finite planet is the best way to save a planet. The biggest threat to the planet, according to this clueless moron, is the best way to save a planet. And then don't forget the next chapter, having children won't make much difference. Yes, there was a lot of attention in 2017 about a study which purported to find that not having children was one of the most impactful things you could do to reduce your carbon footprint. It suggested that having one fewer child would reduce your emissions by the equivalent of nearly 60 tons of CO2 per year. And uh, I have mentioned this study many times that uh, what it showed, not even talking about having no children, just having for every one child less uh, than, than, than having more kids uh, is bigger than uh, everything else that you could, every other lifestyle choice you can make. Not breeding far and away uh, dwarfs the, the next nine things of the top ten combined. Because, read my lips, a person who is never born 
has an ecological footprint of zero, zero, zero. And if you never have children, when you die, your carbon footprint goes to zero, zero, zero and does not continue for eternity. There is one way to reduce your carbon footprint to zero. And it's not just kill yourself. If you bred, you blew it. Even killing yourself is not going to take your carbon footprint uh, to zero if you've had kids. The only way to take your carbon footprint to zero is never have kids and die with never having kids. All right. <clears throat> uh, but according, here we go, you knew he had to show up, but according to Dr. Zeke Housefather, I, lo I love this, Zeke Housefather, a climate scientist in the Breakthrough Institute, and himself the father of a young daughter, here we go, Th this is a climate scientist, this is not the onion, all right. Quote, kids consume a lot less than adults do. Kids consume a lot less than adults do. So I guess as long as the kid dies by the time he's 18 without breeding, have a kid, when he turns 18, kill the kid. Kids consume a lot less than adults do. If you're driving your kid in your car, the marginal impact of driving the kid is quite small. Heating your house, driving places, these are things we do anyway. Yes. <clears throat> Obviously, there are exceptions. After writing this, I will drive my son to his football training, and I would not have done that if he did not exist. But, in general, he has less of an impact on the world than I do. Y yeah, until he becomes, a, you know, a, a, do you believe this? <sighs> the question, of course, is whether my son will have a bigger impact when he is a grown-up. Yes. The 2017 study assumed that each child would be responsible for carbon emissions at the same rate as his parents and also that it would go on, he or she would go on to have children of their own, which in turn would do the same. But, says Health's father, if that's true, then we have failed. Finally, I can finally agree with Zeke House Father that we have failed. Yes, according to uh, House Father, quote, if we don't achieve net zero in the next 40 years, we're not solving the problem whether or not we have fewer kids. Close quote. Luckily, we are making extraordinary progress with renewable energy, and it's very likely that we will have zero or close to zero net emissions by then. My son's children will very probably be living carbon-free lives, or something really bad will have happened. <laughs> yes, uh, or something really bad will have happened in the next 40 years, at which point it makes no difference. There you go. Richie points out that in addition, the West simply cannot reduce population quickly enough to make any difference, even if Almost everyone in rich nations stopped having children. Now, it would be unlikely to make much difference to the total population 
the entire West only has a population of about a billion and our birth rates are already below replacement levels. Quoting this moron Richie, Dr. Richie, quote, if we reduce the birth rates by a little bit in rich countries, it won't make much difference. To combat climate change, we need a low carbon economy and a low carbon world, large scale solutions for billions of people. It might make a difference if we go down to one billion people, but the difference between eight and nine billion people doesn't really register. Yes, what's another billion people according to the environmental scientists? You know, eight billion, nine billion. Uh, who, what, what the hell is the difference? All right, back to this moron. That is especially true because the, de the developing world is catching up with us fast, which is a good thing, and its population is still increasing. All right, the developing world is getting both richer and having more children, and this is a good thing, according to the environmental analysis. Yes, says house father. It's going to be poor and middle income countries that drive the future emissions in a world in which we don't leapfrog fossil fuels. That doesn't mean countries like the US or UK have no responsibility. But if we want India or Indonesia or sub-Saharan Africa to not build coal power stations, we have to give them cheaper alternatives. Solar, nuclear, hydrogen. The big thing is to make green energy cheap. Yes, but the bottom line, the bottom line of it all, children give us a reason to improve things. Yes, the cost of renewable energy has fallen stupendously. Yes, uh, blah, blah, blah. That has meant that even though political progress has sometimes been slow, the world's demand for fossil fuels is slowing. We, we burned, uh, in, in 2021, was the highest record year ever in history. We burned more fossil fuels in the year 2021 than in any year in history. That story came out the same day as this story. Yes. Uh, the world's demand for fossil fuels is slowing and will soon decline. That's becoming clear in the IPCC scenario, says Richie, the environmental scientist. Quote, people still have in their heads that we're heading towards five, six, seven degrees of warming. But the scenarios we're looking at now are just not there. The current policy path heading is heading for 2.7 C. That is too high, but there is still potential to bring it down significantly. There are reasons to be reasonably optimistic with the technological progress, how quickly it is happening, how quickly prices are falling, we're moving in a positive direction and things are speeding up, close quote. If you, back to this moron, if you did not think that, if you thought things were just stagnant or getting worse, then it might make sense 
to panic, but the world is finding solutions. And both Richie and Housefather make a more philosophical point. Who are we doing this for anyway? Says proud father, Housefather, quote, if we're not having kids, then who are we? If we're not having kids, we are the only people on the planet uh, able to face the truth about how doomed we are. That's who we are. We're the smartest people on the entire planet, and we are in a tiny majority. As these climatologists do not understand the definition of a non-breeder. What are we saving the planet for? You know, if not for more humans. There is no reason to save a planet. There is no reason whatsoever to save a planet if humans weren't on it. You know, if humans weren't on the planet, according to Z, just, just fuck the planet. Fuck the planet. You know, excuse my, uh, but that's what Zeke House Father is saying. There is one reason to save the planet is to cram more humans on it. What are we saving the planet for? In the end, we are leaving a better world for our children, and that means having them. And the environmental scientist Richie agrees, quote, if we are saying we need to combat climate change for future generations, it's strange to not reproduce so we haven't got future generations. Close quote. And wrapping it up, climate change is scary, but it's not so bad that we need to give up on the future. Thank you very much to this clueless moron, Tom Chivers, for perhaps the single most ignorant misinformation, disinformation, uh, and, 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 and downright uh, evil uh, essay uh, that I might have ever written, uh, that I might have ever read uh, after 12 years down in the doomosphere. That, that, this, that this shit is being published out here in the mainstream media. We're, we're completely doomed. And, and, and with clueless morons like this, we deserve everything we're bringing on ourselves. Every single breeder, the, the children, the grandchildren, any future generation being brought into uh, to this collapsing planet at this point uh, deserves everything we deserve. I any breeder is directly responsible for the living hell their, 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 uh, their children are going to endure and suffer. They are guilty of child abuse. Having children is child abuse. Bringing a child on this planet, it is child abuse, it is planet abuse. But anyway, I have to wrap this up because it looks like the rain is blowing out of here and uh, I have to get back to unscrewing my life. The uh, roof is getting ready to come off to come off this building and it is time to lower the roof beams, Carpenter. Get out there and lower the roof beams while you still can. Bye guys.